In the last two videos, we went over just kind of a generic form of your exponential. And so we went over y equals two to the x power. So anytime your base is greater than one, your graph is gonna look like this. You're gonna have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And then we went over this one as well. And so if we had two to the negative x power, we wrote that as one half to the x power. And anytime you have a base that's between zero and one, you're going to have an exponential that looks like this, that is decreasing. But you still have the same vertical or horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So let's use that now to actually transform some graphs. So take a moment and pause this video to write this down. Okay, hopefully you have paused the video and you have wrote this down. If you have a vertical shift, you're gonna take whatever your exponential is, and then you are gonna add or subtract something to the end of it. So if you add something to the end, then it moves your exponential function up k units. And if you subtract something at the end, then it moves it down k units. So vertical shifts move the way that we expect them to. Plus goes up, minus goes down. So then your horizontal shifts happen within your function. And so instead of this being CA to the X power, it is now CA to the X plus a number or CA to the X minus a number. And these move opposite. So we think plus goes to the right, but it actually moves to the left. We think minus H goes to the left where all the negative numbers are, but it's actually gonna move to the right. So, and these are all supposed to be H's, by the way. That's a little bit of a mess up. Okay, so it's going to move left H units and move right H units, not K. Okay, so these move opposite of the way that we think. So let's use some information here. And so it says use transformations to graph this function here and then answer the following questions. I put this little asterisk here, and then there's an asterisk with this and this. This is all the information you need to be able to graph this in my math lab. So you first have to be able to identify the base. The base is always whatever this A is. And if you refer back to, I believe, the second video, it says that the base A is whatever is in front, whatever that exponent is attached to. So here, the base is this two because my exponential is this x minus one. So because I know x minus one is my exponent, whatever's in front of it is your base. So my base here is two. And then what is your horizontal and or vertical shift? So sometimes it's only one, sometimes it's the other, sometimes it's both. So I do have a horizontal shift because you have something happening within that exponent up here. So because this is, x minus one and not just x, I know I have a horizontal shift. So this minus one is the same as this minus h and that moves it to the right that many units. So this is gonna go to the right one. And then if you're adding or subtracting something to the end of that exponential, it's gonna move up or down. So because this one is a minus three, this one's gonna go down three. Okay, with these here, so once you're in my math lab, you're gonna end up graphing this in, in your my math lab, and then you can answer these questions. So for me, and then this video, I am going to use my graphing calculator. So I'm gonna go to y equals, and I'm gonna put in two to the x minus one, I'm gonna arrow over. So see how my cursor is up here in the exponent, I'm gonna arrow over and now it's not in the exponent anymore, and then minus three. I'm gonna go zoom six, and here is my exponential. So the domain, there's an arrow this way, there's an arrow this way, so when I go from left to right, my domain is negative infinity to infinity. Spoiler alert, your domain is always going to be negative, into, negative infinity to infinity 
or exponentials. Now the range is going to change and that's going to depend on where this horizontal asymptote is. So if I kind of refer back here to my graph, I had a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So if I am shifting this down three units, that means my horizontal asymptote is now at y equals negative three. And you can kind of find that here on your graph. If I come up here to table, so I'm gonna hit second table, you can see all of your values here. Okay, so these are getting bigger, but if I go in the opposite direction, notice what is this getting closer to? You got negative 2.5, negative 2.75, negative 2.875. If I keep going, negative 2.938, and it keeps getting closer and closer to what number? And that's negative three, right? And eventually, if you keep scrolling up enough, it's just going to say it's negative three. It's just going to round it to negative three, but it actually never touches that number, right? Okay, that asymptote is going to keep getting closer and closer, but never actually arrive. So when I go back to my graph, I know that I have that horizontal asymptote right here at negative three. So when I'm finding my range, as I go from the bottom to the top, we go negative three to infinity and that negative three is not included because of that asymptote. Now, what is the y-intercept? You can find that also from your graph here or from the table. We'll go second table and we'll go to when y is zero. So my y-intercept is zero, negative 2.5. Now I can find that by hand. All you do is you plug in a zero for your X. So I'd have Y equals two to the zero minus one power minus three. That's gonna give me two to the negative first minus three. Two to the negative first is one half. So we have one half minus three. And either one half minus three is negative 2.5, or you can use your calculator. One half minus three is negative 2.5. And if you want that as a fraction, negative five over two. But either way, we get that y-intercept of negative 2.5. Okay. So example five, we're asked the same questions. So what is the base and what is your horizontal and vertical shifts is going to be able to graph your, your thing on my math lab. So what is the base here? Well, with this one, we have to rewrite this. This is the same thing as f of x equals, to make this exponent positive, we have to do what we did on this graph here. When I have two to the negative x, this became one half. So this is the same as one fifth to the x power plus two. So your base is not five, your base is one fifth. So then your horizontal and or vertical shifts. Horizontal happens when I add or subtract something to my exponent. I have nothing added or subtracted to my exponent, it is simply just x. So then your vertical shifts is when you add or subtract something to the end of your exponential. And I do have a plus two here. So that means this one here is moving up two units. So let's put this in our, in our graph here. And you can enter this in either of these two ways. I am gonna put mine in as five to the negative X power, just because it's less things to type in, but you do get the same thing no matter what. Okay, so here's my, my exponential, which should make sense that it's going to be a decreasing one because my base is between zero and one. Okay. So what is the range? Well, as I go from left to right, we've got arrow and arrow. My domain is all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. Every domain will be and then the range. So usually 
I have a horizontal asymptote right here at zero, but because this has been shifted up two units, when I come over here to table, I can see here that this is getting closer and closer to two, which then it eventually, your calculator just simply rounds it to two. Okay, so we have that horizontal asymptote at two because usually it's at zero, and because they're shifting up to the horizontal asymptote shifts, shifts up with it. So my range is now from bottom to top is two to infinity. And that two is not included because of that horizontal asymptote at y equals two. And then what is the y-intercept? Well, you can plug in zero here. If we go y equals, and I'm gonna go with this one-fifth, one-fifth to the zero power plus two. One-fifth to the zero power is one. Anything to the zero power is one. So we have one plus two, and so it is three. And if you come over here to your table, you can see that when X is zero, your Y is three. Okay, and then last one here. Use transformations to graph and then answer the following questions. Okay, we have F of X equals E, to the x plus two. So your base is e. Okay, and let's remember that e is about 2.72. Okay, so e is just a number. It's similar to pi. It's an irrational number. So I have a base of e. What is the horizontal or vertical shift? Well, here I am adding two within that exponent. That means I have a horizontal shift. This goes opposite of what we think. So plus two, we think of going to the right towards all the positive twos. This is actually gonna go to the left two. So I'm gonna put this in my calculator. Okay, and then your E is right here above your natural log, your LN. So I'm going to go second LN for my E, and we have X plus two, and then I will graph. So here's my exponential. Because this has not been shifted up or down at all, that means my horizontal asymptote here is going to remain at zero. And if you look here, this is getting closer and closer to zero, and then it will eventually, maybe not. All of these here means it's getting closer and closer to zero. Let's see if it actually goes to zero. Does not look like it will. Okay, but because that has not been shifted, your horizontal asymptote is going to remain at y equals zero. So then the domain and the range. Domain, when you go left to right, you have arrow to arrow. So this is still all real numbers. And then your range, as you go from the bottom to the top, you're gonna hit that horizontal asymptote at y equals zero first. We have zero to infinity.